Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back. Well, welcome to the Outer Worlds, uh, a game I have very little knowledge about. I know it's uh, kind of based off of Fallout. Um, maybe that's doing it a disservice. Well, I guess we'll see, because this is going to be a completely blind playthrough. Uh, so The Outer Worlds is a game by Obsidian, which are the developers of Fallout New Vegas as well. So uh, by many considered one of the best Fallouts ever created, but uh, even in the time constraints they had. But uh, today we're going to start our playthrough, our completely blind playthrough of The Outer Worlds. I've barely seen anything about this game. I don't know what it's about. Uh, it's been recommended to me by a few people. Um, and I think it's going to be a perfect fit for this channel, because uh, as far as I've heard about it, uh, there's a lot of uh, story-driven gameplay here. You can make a lot of decisions, a lot of your decisions are also factored in by your skills. Uh, kind of something I really liked in Prey as well, because this is uh, replacing Prey in the probably Tuesday and maybe even Thursday slot. I'm gonna start at, at it on Thursday and then we'll see next week where we'll end. I'm gonna try and keep these uh, episodes as concise as possible. I'm aiming at uh, about 30 minutes per episode. This one is gonna be a bit longer since it's the first one. But uh, if you're new to the channel, let me know how you found this channel and how you found this video because I'm really, really curious about it. And if you have any feedback, please let me know. I'm always, uh, I always appreciate any sort of feedback. And likewise, if you're new, I try to be as thorough as possible in my playthrough of games, especially larger games like I'm assuming this one. Uh, we try to be as thorough as possible. So trying to do basically all the quests. Um, with that said, without further ado, let's see what the options are here. We have a nice spaceship in the background. So I set up some settings such as subtitles and the like and we'll head into new game. And then usually if you're uh, if you're familiar with the channel you already know that. I like a challenge so I think I'm gonna go for hard supernova. So that's probably survival. Yeah you must eat drink and sleep to survive. Companions can die permanently and stuff like that. So I'm not gonna go into supernova. I'm gonna go into hard. In hard mode enemies have more health and do more damage. So here we go. And now we got the subtitles again. I don't know. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wow. Halcyon. Why stay earthbound when prosperity waits in the stars? And I'll shut up right now. Why stay earthbound when prosperity awaits you in the stars? Come to Halcyon, the only colony on the edge of the frontier owned and operated by corporations. A trip of 10 short years will feel like mere minutes thanks to the comfort and safety of your very own hibernation chamber. You'll wake up in a perfect society designed to maximize your productivity with guaranteed full employment. With only a minor term of service, you will become the master of your own destiny when you go out of this world to the Halcyon Colony. Colony ship Hope found drifting. Hope to be left at the edge of colony. Okay. A breach of security. And that's probably our ship. Okay, somebody's entering. Oh, so somebody is entering our ship. He seems a bit cuckoo. Phineas Vernon Wells, fugitive wanted by Halcyon Holding Sport. <sighs> Hundreds of thousands of colonists left to drift out here forever just to keep from damaging the board's bottom line. Disgraceful. Okay. What the? Attributes? Okay, strength, dexterity, intelligence, perception, charm, and temperament. Okay, I'm just gonna go through these slightly. So strength affects melee weapon damage and the amount you can carry. We're used to that. Dexterity affects melee attack speed and ranged weapon reload speed. Makes sense. Intelligence affects critical hit bonus damage. 
Perception affects headshot and weak spot damage bonuses. Charm affects faction reputation and companion ability cooldowns. And temperament improves your natural health generation, regeneration. So I have six points. Um, and I can change... So that... Okay, so I have six points remaining and I can change that like this. So, and the further I go, frozen meat, and I like you already. the further the bonuses go. So that is interesting. Um, so tem temperament is health regeneration and goes into lie sneaks, medical engineering and determination. There's a lot of skills, but I see skills are actually coming back here and there. So I'm guessing there's going to be around 15 or the, of those. Um, intelligence sounds good, so that's hack, persuade, medical, and science. So that's going to open up a few things for us. So I think that should go up to uh, two points. Reception also sounds great. So I think double that. And then I think charm is going to be next. The other ones I'm just going to keep like that. So I think double the charm. So that gives us positive and more positive faction reputation reactions and less negative faction reputation reactions. Okay. So that's our six points. I think I'm going to go with this. If we get into anything else, I'm, I'm guessing we're going to get more points into this later on. I'm not exactly sure how this building will work. And I see there's a lot more at the top of the screen. Um, skills, aptitude, appearance, name and summary. We're going to be here a while. Okay, so I have two points to go into like skill categories and these are all the skills. So melee, one-handed and two-handed, ranged handguns, long guns and heavy weapons. Then defense is dodge and block. Dialogue is persuade, lie and intimidate. Stealth is sneak, hack and lockpick. Tech is medical science and engineering. And leadership is inspiration and determination. And it seems like we unlock perks or base skills every 20 points. After checking every skill tree here, I think I'm gonna go with tech Your for one. Been wasted in a corporate lab. So that boosts 10 points in each of the subsequent skills. And then we get, so basically sneak attack would be nice. So there's a, a sneak attack skill here underneath sneak, but it unlocks at 20 and I'm only at six. So even if I put a point in the stealth, that's not gonna change anything. Um, so I'm not going to do that because I already have the ability to sell goods, apparently. So I think I should go into dialogue because I want to open up as much stuff as soon as possible. So dialogue. I hope we haven't lost that silver tongue to frostbite. Uh, I hope so too, Mr. Mr. Wells. Thank you. Aptitude. That is probably one more extra perk. So no discernible aptitude colonist sounds sounded like a nice entry level career for a person of your skills. Expanding humanity's reach by civilizing the cosmic frontier was ambitious enough without worrying about your day job. You had the rest of your life to decide how to be useful in Halcyon. Okay, so every single one of these has a description. I'm not going to go through everything. I know I read a lot in these uh, episodes, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go as medical technician, junior grade. So prior to leaving Earth, you earned the trust of the medical community's most esteemed junior surgeons, who entrusted you with the stuffing cotton balls into pill bottles. Experience on the job made you realize that diagnosing illness doesn't take a formal education, when a search terminal and a little imagination will do the trick. So you're not really a medical professional, but medical technician, here we go. We get one extra point into oh, medical. So I think I'm just going to go for one of the basic heads as uh, my character. Um, so let's just go with that. This high tower ring, this hairdo does, uh, does look really nice. So I'm just going to grab that. So there we go. Don't need to go any further than that. Just a lovely, lovely new female character. And we're going to call her Sandra. There we go. This is Sandra. Nice to meet you, Sandra. So there we go, a nice overview. So we're going with intelligence, perception and charm as a medical technician boosted in, um, well, the more medical science engineering uh, skills over here and the charm skills to so persuade, lie and intimidate. So let's see how we fare out in the world, in the outer worlds. Okay, alarm goes off Looks immediately. To be your lucky day, my friend.
Okay. We just dump this. Not likely, bootlickers. Initiate skip jump. And there we go. There are two orbiting laboratory in the Halcyon system. Seems like our engine is out though. Structural integrity down 25%. Power levels down <sighs> Shit. This actually looks really good, by the way. Since I'm playing Fallout every every week. Ah, there you are. Wondering what's going on, eh? Bit of bad news there, I'm afraid. Your colony ship was inexplicably knocked out of skip space and forced to complete its journey at sublight speeds. This means that you and every other colonist on the Hope have been in suspended animation for 70 years, give or take. Normally, <laughs> reviving someone after so long leads to some quite horrifying results. It's called explosive cell death, but it's really more of a liquefaction. <laughs> Something wrong? Oh, yes, well, <laughs> not to worry. I've pumped your body full of a special concoction I devised to keep you from dying so horrifically. Hopefully at all, but uh, I guess we'll see, yes? Yeah? Wait, are you welding the door I shut again? The last of my chemical supplies saving you. I know it's a lot to ask, but I must have your help securing more if we're to save the rest of your fellow colonists. I'd see it done myself, of course, but the board has a sizable bounty on my head. Now, my ship is inoperative, but I've managed to hire a smuggler to help you out. He'll be... Oh, I see we're in position. Good luck! In position for what? Um, in position for... He's pressing buttons again. Oh, God. Okay. Is he shooting us out of a ship? 60th anniversary of the Hope's disappearance. Remember the Hope. So we were on a ship that was, well, that broke down, which caused it to go slower. Seems like it is. There you are. Now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, the smuggler. His name is Hawthorne, and he should be waiting for you at the landing site. He's to be your uh, chauffeur, so to speak. Not to worry, I'm told he's a specialist. Dashing gunslinger, one of a kind ship, that sort of thing. You'll like him, I'm sure. I've also outfitted you with a simple wireless monitor so I can track your progress. I'll check in with you as soon as you land. Good luck. I'm uh, all the colonists are counting on you. Okay. So our job is to rescue the other colonists aboard the Hope. But we saw there was another big ship right next to it, the one that was attacking Wells. Okay, and we crashed down. Great. So I'm assuming that Wells was kind of correct and that the corporations that run these planets, I suppose, these outer worlds, oh, you've landed. Good. don't want the Hope to come to their planets. What in law's name? Is um, that him? Oh, that idiot. I told him to plant the beacon and move away, not stand there holding it. <laughs> oh well, no sense in letting his ship go to waste. Okay, I got a silver trophy for just booting up the game. Better you than the board, huh? Holy crap, not idea. sure I trusted the fellow. Might have gone after the bounty on my head. Shame about the whole squashing thing. Nasty way to go. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Holy crap. Does he have anything on his corpse? Doesn't seem like it. So yeah, he was holding the, the beacon upright and then got smashed in the face. I love how this game sets the tone though. Um, there's like fluffy, fluffy things here. Blah, blah. Ooh, I can walk through the fluffy things. Blah. It's going to probably look great on the video. But, 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 we need to find a ship. This looks awesome, by the way. Look at this. I'm not entirely familiar on which uh, we saw the planet, right? I kind of forgot about the name of the planet. Axis jumping! Thank you, Obsidian. Axis jumping. And not triangle like freaking Fallout. That I'm going to be confused the next time I'm going to play Fallout. 
I'm even looking at the, the flowers to start picking them. Circle is sneak. I prefer it on the right stick, but circle is apparently sneak. Hi. Spurt. Or what, what was that? Spurt? I don't know, because the game isn't telling me anymore. Okay, L3 is sprinting, then I definitely don't understand why R3 isn't crouching, but oh, another corpse. With no legs. Sir. Are you, are you okay? Adreno. Marauder Tug. Okay, so not everybody's friendly. Got it. How do I get to my inventory? I want to check out what that syringe was that I just picked up. Ooh. Oh. Those look like... Are those purple or red tigers? Over enemies' heads will tell you if they're unaware, suspicious, investigating, or alert. Okay, so if I move... I probably should move over here, right? Hi. Just stay. Oh, gold. Um, into the grass. Yes. Those look awesome. I'm using buttons. Hopefully, I'm not accidentally shooting these things. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They. I think they saw. They heard something. I'm just gonna leave. Is this for me? No. Okay. Okay. This looks great, by the way. What the hell is going on? Okay. Sprat. Now, you've been frozen for a while. There's bound to be unforeseen side effects. Ah, uh, okay. My vision turned purple. Ow! Um, use the emergency medicinal inhaler to heal. Each activation consumes one adreno, okay? But do I need to... Okay. I'm on drugs already. This is a great start to a game. But, but, how do I... Oh, guard Pelham. Hey, you, come here. You've tried the best now. <sighs> now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Oh, wow, that stings. Okay. Oh, I can patch him up. There we go. Uh, looks like the bleeding stopped. I owe you one. Hope you don't mind me omitting this little exchange for my report. Spacer's choice doesn't like us accepting outside help. Spacer's Choice. Spacer's what now? Oh, we're all part of the Spacer's Choice family here. Not that I deserve to be. Can't even deliver a company slogan. We were out on patrol. I saw a marauder camp up in the hills. Thought I could take them. Then my gun misfired. Right through my side. I mean, what are the odds of that, right? There's probably a stat for that. I with my life. Crawled in here and blocked off the exit with those canisters. Okay, so you're hiding in a cave and you blocked off the exit. You're as good as dead. <laughs> Spacer's choice policy clearly stipulates that dead and as good as dead are two completely different properties of matter. Unless I'm dead, I'm contractually obligated to attend to my post. I will report that illegally grounded spacecraft if it is the last thing I do. See those canisters by the entrance? Marauders come sniffing around in here and I can take them all out with a single shot. Not bad, huh? Aren't you gonna blow yourself up? Um, I've got a better idea. Give me your gun. I'll go for. I'll go get help. Um, you're an idiot. Give me your gun before you get yourself killed. I'm gonna persuade him. Yeah. Okay. You look like you know your way around a gun. Got some spare ammo. Not counting the bullet in my side. Oh, you Here, choker! You. You can have my saber too for patching me up and all. Ooh. All spacer's choice weapons are now thirty percent less likely to malfunction. You've tried the best. Now try the rest. Spacer's Choice. Okay. Yes, okay. that time. Yeah, you did. So Spacer's Choice and Clio are two separate companies, I suppose, because they're all run by companies, if I understand it correctly. Can you tell me where I am? You hit your head or something? You're in Emerald Vale. We're a Spacer's Choice community. Edgewater's a little ways down. Uh, prettiest place in the Vale. Uh, be sure to stop by our provisioners for a can of our famous salt tuna. Okay, Emerald's Veil. I have a gun now. It looks a bit small, but I suppose that's normal. Can I... Is there anything else I can take with me? Okay, so I can now blow that up. I'm just gonna stand over here, because I feel like that's gonna be a big explosion. Sorry, Phineas. Oh, 
Okay, I have a 110 bullets, by the way. I'm not gonna kill the little frog thingy. The frog rat, the sprat. Oh, is that why it's called a sprat? It's a sort of rat. Oh, I'm starting to feel wibbly wobbly again. <laughs> Tactical time dilation. Due to complications stemming from being revived after an extended hibernation, your brain processes time differently. Pressing the time dilation, the tactical time dilation button slows down the world, giving you time to think, as well as take action. You have a limited time in this mode, standing still drains your TD, TTD meter very slowly, while moving and attacks drain it faster. The TTD meter refreshes slowly over time. So, I can press... Okay, R1, I can switch in and out of it. The Marauder Vandal. Can I, I still can't pick up plants, okay. Those guys don't sound human, by the way. Can I shoot them in the, in the face? I think I can, right? Oh god. Okay, so 100, 100 XP for killing this guy. Oh god. And then... Boop. Is he dead? I think he is, right? Okay. Double click the jump button to dodge left, right or backwards. Ooh, that is cool. A bit cartridge. Cartridge stores an amount of bits used as currency. So I can take that. And then light ammo. That actually is for my gun. I can't reload. There's only nine bullets in my mag. Okay, you have a new item view within the inventory. Like that. Four weapons equipped at a time. You can also inspect your weapons, compare them, flag them as junk, or break them down for parts. Players with the engineering skill can repair weapons on the screen as well. And also have the saber. Okay, so the saber is a... A melee weapon, so if they get close, I can probably use that. Do I need to switch between those two? Usually it's triangle to switch. Yeah, it is. Ooh. Use these controls to attack and block. Most melee weapons can perform three swing combos. All melee weapons can block. And if I switch back, I get my pistol. Okay, basic controls done. Uh, we get more money and ammo. Plenty of ammo, actually. Zero G brew and mag pick. I never checked out what all of those are. That's probably just food items. Hacking and picking locks. Your hacking and lockpick skills help you get into places you're not meant to be. Magpicks are used to break open locks. Okay, so that's that. And bypass shunts are used to break open computer encryptions. If your skill is high enough to break the security, you will see how many magpicks or shunts you need and how long it will take. Raising your skill will lower the number of items used and speed up the process. So I need four magpicks and five... Oh, lockpicking skills. So I need to hold that and I can just open this up with the four magpicks I found, and I get a telescoping staff. So that's a two-handed melee weapon. Just gonna grab that anyway. I'll grab everything I can find for now. I did actually take damage. I can't forget that I'm actually playing on hard. So I'm gonna take significant damage if I get hit. So what I, what I was saying is there's an icon on the underneath my, uh, my health bar and my Slow down bar that shows me how many dodges I still have left. So... Oh, he's actually firing at me. And a final shot. There we go. There we go. The rebuilt mining gear. Oh, that's armor. So we can equip armor as well then. So four armor compared to three armor, but... So it boosts up. I do love the hibernation suit. It's, it's really, really cool. But it boosts up my stealth skills and it's a light armor type. Same as, but that boosts my tech skills by five. So let's remember that for later. I could have probably evaded all of those as well. Without the need for shooting anyone. Okay, that was a weird creature. But I mean... I like a bit of combat. Wait. Private Kimball and Lieutenant Mercer. Okay, let's sneak up on those guys. They're probably gonna help. Hello, fellas. Blazes? Where'd you come from? Hi. I I came from up there. I helped your buddy out. 
Don't know where you came from, stranger, but you best keep your head down. There's marauders hereabouts, and worse, landing violators. Call on that rung leech. Landing in the veil without using an official Spacer's Choice landing pad. I'd slap him with a fine if it weren't for all these marauders shambling about. Well, you should probably kill the marauders. It's just a landing violation that I go. I feel like they don't let that sort of stuff go, so... I found one of your teammates holed up in a cave. Really? How is he? I patched him up. I, I, I helped him with the, uh, with the pain. Still immoral. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. Spacer's Choice family ain't authorized to receive medical aid from off-brand physicians. We'll see him back to Edgewater. Just as soon as I cross these marauders off with a swift, cost-efficient fury that's made Spacer's Choice the most trusted brand in personal defense. Oh, gold. Just, you know, need a couple of winks to catch my breath. Stretch my legs, son. Okay... Do Spacer's Choice guards back down from a challenge so you can persuade again or lie or intimidate? Um, yeah, so I, w I want to help. Well, sometimes. Management's real good at cost-benefit analysis. But, seeing as I'm the acting manager in this situation, you know what? You're right. It's time we cross those marauders off, find whoever owns that ship, and file a full report. Then it's gonna be fucking laminated. Language. Language. Okay, bye. So I'm guessing they're gonna mostly kill the uh, marauders. I can fire, fire as well. I think I killed one of them died. Oh god. Oh what what the hell am I doing? Oh I'm sniffing. And I'm getting Will you please kill him? Thank you. Need to need to keep an eye on my health there. Was that okay? I was confused whether that was him or me that was dying. So let's sniff, take a whiff on that. And that heals up about, yeah, a bit. Just gonna take another whiff. So that kills off those security officers as well, I think, because they're, they're, they're dead. Um, sentry Saber, so that's the exact same thing I already have. So yeah, that's Private Kimball. Private Kimball died. Heavy ammo. Okay, and a necklace. Ooh, a pretty necklace if you are into that sort of thing. This necklace makes a strong fashion statement. Look at my neck, there is something on it. A pretty something. Look at it. Okay, okay. It's a bit aggressive, but where's the other, the, the one I convinced to start shooting? Ah, she's in the grass over here, Lieutenant Mercer. So, bit cartridge, energy cells, and a light assault rifle. It's a heavy long gun. So let's equip that. So now... I think we have, yeah, we can hold triangle as well. So now we have this thing. Ooh. That looks great, by the way. And that's the sword and then the pistol. Okay. Okay, Hawthorne's ship looks exactly the same as Wells' ship. And there's the last Marauder with another light pistol. But I think it's the exact same pistol that I'm using, right? Yeah. They apparently also killed a few of those ca cannons. Can it, can it, can it, yeah, can it feral. Looks creepy, but let's enter the ship because I think everybody's dead. Because of me, kind of. So let's open up the door. Hi. Welcome aboard the reliable or the, <laughs> the unreliable. Okay. Thank you, Ada. Ooh, there's, ah. Uh, to Adreno, need that. Please be informed that ignoring me is dangerous for your health. Okay, I'm sorry. Hi. Unauthorized access of spacefaring vessels is a crime. Hi. Hello, Marauder. I am Ada, the autonomous digital astrogator of this vessel. Please be informed that I am authorized to use violent retribution against unwanted solicitors. Please return any misappropriated equipment and exit this vessel in an orderly fashion. Failure to do so will result in your immediate destruction. Well, I have skills. What are you going to do? Self-destruct? I'm not here to misappropriate anything. Yeah, the second one. I detect an elevated heart rate, indicating dishonesty. Please prepare yourself for lethal deterrence. Jettison procedures initiated. Disengaging airlocks. Prepare to eject all boarding parties in five, 
But we're not in space. Um, you realize we're on the ground, right? You are still here. My deception protocols have failed. I have been programmed to express disappointment. This game is funny, by the way. I need to get the ship in the air. Is this Hawthorne ship? Yes. This vessel is the registered property of Captain Alex Hawthorne. I am incapable of accepting orders from anyone other than Captain Alex Hawthorne. Okay, but, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> your captain's a red smear under my escape pod. <laughs> yes. I understand. I will require some time to process this information. Thank you for your patience and for your honesty. I am programmed to take orders exclusively from Captain Hawthorne. If I accept your orders, then you must be Captain Hawthorne. Do you understand? Um... <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, I get it. So she's trying to work around her own protocols. Well done, Captain Hawthorne. I see your powers of deductive reasoning remain intact. Unfortunately, our engine is currently inoperable. Our main drive suffered a critical power failure, and we were forced to make an emergency landing. The main drive's power regulator has been irreparably damaged and must be replaced. Okay, I'll doubt I'll find a part like that just sitting in a garage. High capacity power regulators are sometimes employed in the electrical networks of worker settlements. Uh huh. I have taken the liberty of printing you a new captain's identity cartridge. Please try not to lose it this time. This time. This cartridge identifies you, Alex Hawthorne, as the registered proprietor and captain of the Unreliable. Do you understand? Uh, my name is Sandra, but. <laughs> yeah, Ada, I got it. Thanks. Um. Try to stay. Oh, oh, that was pretty. That was very nice. I like the level up screen. Leveling up increases your health points, gives you points to upgrade your skills, as well as gives you access to a new perk every other level. Keep leveling, and you'll be upper management material in no time. Okay, corporate lingo all over the place. We're used to we're getting used to that already. The navigation console is offline at this time, Captain. Yeah, thank you, Ada. I, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong thing. Anti-Cleo management training. Every time you level up, you earn skill points to spend on improving your skills. Everything else we've seen, I think. Yeah, so every 20 we get a new uh, bonus and every at 50 we can spend points directly into specialized skills. So now we can put... Okay, now we can get single digit points into stealth. So I'm gonna put a few into stealth because of the sneak attack bonus. And then, of course, we can see it's boosted because of our equipment at the moment. I love how there's, like, loose tubes on my suit. I didn't notice that the first time around. There's, like, loose tubing, even almost broken tubing, hanging from the suit. But, okay. Uh, we were going into tech, so I think I'm going to go two points into tech, two points into leadership, and then we'll start boosting up a bit of our gun skills as well to 15 and 22. Sounds good. Long guns is also good because that means we can use the assault rifle we got really nicely. Uh, no, 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 no. Apply. Thank you. Apply. There we go. And then perks. Selecting perks. Welcome to perk selection. You get a new perk point to spend every two levels. So basically like Fallout New Vegas. You can also acquire perk points through gameplay such as by accepting a flaw. Acquiring five new perks makes the next tier of perks available to you. So I think toughness is going to be, well, a simple one, but of course one I really, really want right now, since I'm working with the uh, hard difficulty. So 50% extra base health, which is a lot, I feel like. So let's uh, pick that perk and accept. Next one is probably going to go into carry weight, so pack mule, so 50 extra kilograms of carry capacity, which is always nice. There we go. Perk selected, skill points assigned, and then we can, I could probably explore the rest of the ship. If your equipment is in need of repair or modification, the Crux 2000 workbench is at your disposal, Captain. Ooh, a sword of shotgun. And weapon parts. One of your weapon or armor items is broken and at minimum effectiveness. You should find a workbench and repair it. So the pistol is actually at 80%. And the shotgun is basically broken, so... I can select the shotgun. 
Aha, wait, there's a menu up there. I didn't see that. Um, so I can repair the shotgun with bits. And I'm nine bits short, apparently, so I can't repair it. I'm going to use the long gun for now, because I feel like it's the most powerful one I have. I could explore the rest of the ship, um, but I think we need to find that. We're going to return to this anyway, so let's just go outside and find ourselves, well, more stuff. Oh, hi. I'll be with you, friend. I'm Ernie, from the Spacer's Choice Department of Human Resources. Town sent me hereabouts to check on the guards. Now, it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but seems to me they're all dead. Mind telling me what happened here? Uh, well, the, the, <laughs> the guards accidentally, brutally shot themselves while on patrol. Um, well, we can just tell the truth, I suppose. Hmm, altercation, you say? Yeah, shame as that goes. Spacer's Choice policy strictly prohibits dying during work hours. Guess I'd better get to cleaning up. Can't just leave company property scattered about, bleeding out on the dirt. So the people are property, and he just said that it's prohibited to die during working hours. That's okay, absurd, but um, I could use their gear. No sense in letting a good suit of armor go to waste. Yes. Uh, no can do, friend. That armor is Spacer's Choice property. Bodies too, living or otherwise. Company policy, you see. You don't want to amble on over to Edgewater at your earliest convenience. Constable's office might have work for someone with your, uh, let's just say, aggressive disposition. Oh, and uh, be sure to stop by the Edgewater Provisioner for a can of salt tuna. It's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice. Okay, so they all... Hang on, I want to ask you something. Um... I don't think I need something from Ernest. Um, I'll be on my way, Ernest. Thank, thank you for. He's just gonna, he's just gonna do that. Apparently, interesting. Uh, so now I, I just got a compass marker as well. I'm assuming we need to head. So that's Edgewater. That's actually pretty crisp. Edgewater, but and we're in the Emerald Vale right now, so we need to be careful because I see stuff walking around there as well. That seems like a big creature. Um, is there, is this supposed to be the road? I'm supposing this is the road. Oh, there's another one over there. There he goes. And then this one. There we go. And that's all my ammo. Okay, that was a, it's an assault rifle, obviously, so it's a lot higher fire rate than I expected it was going to be. And apparently they killed a few people as well because there's dead residents around as well. And the Marauder is not even carrying anything. That's a bit weird. Ah, this one has light ammo. There we go. Edgewater. How do I actually... Can I... Ah, there we go. I can holster my weapon. Shouldn't be running around with my weapon drawn. But those turrets. Or just... These look like turrets. Although they look a bit silly. Ooh, a shovel. But I, I'm going to steal it. Hi, Silas. Don't go ambling out in those hills. That's marauder territory, friend. I just came from there, buddy. Nice to meet you. I'm Alex Hawthorne, captain of the Unreliable. Pleased to make your acquaintanceship. I'd shake your hand, but I've been hauling corpses. You don't want none of that on you. Name Silas. Junior in humor for the town of Edgewater. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family. Okay, so Spacer's Choice. Um, who do I talk to about a power regulator? Yeah, good good idea, Sandra. Definitely not the junior in humor, that's for sure. If you've got business inquiries, you should stop by Reed Thompson's office. He's up in the tower above the cannery. Head into town, follow the road. He's up in Look, the tower, obviously okay. obviously ain't a worker. What's your racket? You a smuggler? Freelancer? Um, I depends on the job, on the work. You offering me a job? Edgewater is a company town, board owned and operated. That includes the cemetery. None of us own our grave sites. We rent them from the company. Renting means money. Money means paperwork. Paperwork means signatures. Some of our families become a mite delinquent in paying their dues. You see. Okay. 
You want me to collect what's owed to you? I can do that. So you're making people pay for their own graves. Yep, basically. Um, yeah, okay, sure. Four workers still haven't paid up. Phyllis, Conrad, Ludwig, and Martin Abernathy. He's a special case. You may want to twist his arm a little. So there we go. Why is, why is he a special case? He just is. Look, I don't want to get into it. Just make sure he pays up. Okay, so four people we need to talk to. Um, thank you, Silas. I'll, I'll see you later on, I suppose, when I get the money from those people that are apparently paying for a very, very small plot of land. Because these graves are really close together and, like, really... I mean, yeah, graves are usually close together, but usually you can walk between them without touching the grave. And I feel like this isn't the case here. They really are really, really skimpy. Are, are you a man or a robot? Corporate recruit and corporate trooper. Okay, hi people. Edgewater. So that's the moon, man. Employment community by species choice. And there's, yeah, let's just start by, because I'm assuming I can go into most of these places or not. No. This seems like a fancy door, yeah. Can't open that. Hi. Anyone here? Ooh. It's this. Do you want to end your years in luxury and comfort? Do you dream of walking beneath the vaulted arches of Byzantium? Early retirement is finally here. Early retirement is your ticket to Byzantium. Early retirement is Chairman Rockwell and Mr. Minister Clark's gift to you. Selection for the early retirement process is by lottery. Winning Winners enjoy an all-expense-paid trip to their new life in Byzantium. The Jewel of Halcyon. So that's probably another planet, I suppose, or another ship. I could steal all of these things, but for now I don't even have an energy weapon. Um, so, what's what's this? So this is Silas's, because it says Junior in humor, so that's Silas's terminal. Aha, I can hack the burial invoice. Theodore Granger, industrial accident, he died because of an industrial accident. And burial status successfully in 3rd in Graveside 13F. Paid and accounted for, Teddy's corpse was missing a hand. Deducted five bits from the graveside fee because I'm a kindly fellow. Yeah, because he's not a full corpse. Oh my god, this, this place is horrible. This is, I mean, at least they're getting coffins. That's something. Does that change anything if I steal that? Does that look differently or not? Because I can steal these mag picks. And it doesn't seem like it's marked as stolen either, so... I guess as long as nobody sees me doing it, I can just steal stuff. Okay, with that done, we can get into Edgewater. I'm supposing this is going to be a loading screen. Okay, and there we go. Edgewater discovered. We get another 600 experience for that. I should probably put my gun away again. I don't know why the game keeps doing that. I'm, I'm with friendly people, I suppose. So, first things first. I should probably just check in with the town leader. And uh, we'll explore the town further in the next episode, but I want to end it by talking to the local leader. So the Saltuna Cannery, we were pointed into this direction as well, because we could get something for free, if I remember. Um, hello? There's a, another terminal here, and I can steal a bunch of stuff, but... Can I use the terminal? There's a thing that's also... No, that's not even red. Logs? Oh, and you need to pay for your sick leave. That is great. Work invigorates the spirit. Sickness in the body reflects sickness in the mind and sickness in the character. If you find yourself falling ill, it may be time to schedule a meeting with our local vicar. Okay. This this place is out of its mind. Um, use. Okay. Ooh, nice music. Elevate the music is always nice. There we go. This is... The Grease Monkey Argo? I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson, sir. You asked why it's taking so long to fix. The answer's technical. Don't apologize. Just try using small words for me. The cans bust open in the oven because she's set to cook saltuna, which isn't what we've got. Mr. Thompson? I think there's someone here to see you. Focus, Miss Holcomb. You and I are still talking. Let's start over. Walk me through the process. Show me where it's going awry. Well, sure. It's uh, mostly on account of what we're feeding into the mechanism. 
It puts food in cans. We have food, we have cans. Why won't it work like we need? She's expecting Seltuna of a certain size. We're filling the cans with... Well, not fish. Okay. That's awkward. That music in the background really reminds me of Borderlands right now. Um, hello. So we've got a guest. Hello, Mr. Reed Thompson. Hurry up, Harvati. I do wish you'd spoken up. I do apologize. I was given no forewarning of your arrival, or I might have welcomed you at the gates myself. Um, for some reason, I don't... I don't believe you. I don't work for a space's choice. Of course not. I don't have that kind of luck. Seems I allowed my excitement to run away with my wits. Been a few seasons since we've had a visitor pass through. Only regulator we got is hooked up to the town transformer. Mr. Tobson ain't liable to be keen on dismantling it. I beg your pardon. I am most emphatically not keen on any such thing. I can't let you have our power regulator. But I happen to know of another one. And I happen to know exactly how you may retrieve it without frying yourself in the process. Okay. Let me guess, you want to do something for... You want me to do something for you before you help me. My proposition benefits the both of us. Please, hear me out. There's a power regulator in the old botanical lab. It's mostly abandoned, so all that power is being squandered. Go down to the geothermal plant. Reroute power from the botanical district over to us. Once their power is shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. I feel like that's, yeah, mostly abandoned. What do you mean? I was not entirely sure how to tell you this. The botanical labs are not legally inhabited, but there are people who live there. Okay. Um. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> you mean Meraldis? Meraldis aren't people. Um... Tell me what I need. I mean, I don't think these people take kindly to losing their power, indeed. No, I do not imagine they will be pleased. But like a parent disciplining an unruly child, you will be doing them a kindness. The people living in the botanical labs, they're deserters, former workers. I need them back at their posts. I need them to come home. Tell me what I need to My do. My hope is that by cutting off their power, you will convince those deserters to come back to town. Before you go to the plant, I want you to stop by the botanical lab. Speak to their leader, Adelaide. Tell her the power's about to go. And that it's time her band of deserters came back to town. Okay, so we can give them a warning about what's about to happen. I'll see what I can do to help you. My dad told me all about the plant. Taught me all he knew. I could come in useful. Yes. I mean, if that's all right with you, Mr. She Thompson. can tag along. Sir. She has my haircut. I hesitate to part ways with Miss Holcomb, but I cannot deny that she is talented and may prove useful to you. You will need an administrative passcode in order to enter the plant. I am trusting you with mine and trusting Miss Holcomb to guide you if you'd like. Uh, yes, I could use the company. Great. I got my wrenches and diagnosticators and hairpins and engine tape, so I'm all set. Well, I am glad to hear that. Best of luck to you, and thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know. Wait, is that... I recognize that voice. The voice of Parvati. You're Ashley Birch. You're Aloy from An Antiny Tina. You're, you're... Okay, companions, I need to read this. Um, companions provide combat support. Their skills enhance your skills. They increase your carrying capacity, and you can unlock special companion combat abilities with the inspiration skill. Okay, but you're voiced by Ashley Birch. I'm pretty sure about that, because you sound really, really familiar. Let's talk. We better clear out of Mr. Thompson's office before we talk. Yeah, clearly, clearly. That's definitely Ashley Birch. So, uh, Alo from uh, Horizon Zero Dawn or Tiny Tina from Borderlands, definitely her. Um, let's use that. Is she with me? She's with me. I do love her design. So she's kind of like... A grease monkey, I suppose. An engineer. Technical engineer. She's, I mean, the outfit says as much. Um, hey, okay. Can we talk? Sorry. Sh sure. Can we talk? Yes, no problem. Sorry. I, you just want to get out of here. And you likely don't want to tag along like me. It's just, Mr. Thompson has his own view 
on matters, on account of it's his job and, and what all, but that's not the only side of the tale. I assumed so. So figures, Reed didn't exactly strike me as the most honest soul. Oh, he ain't a liar. He believes every word he says. It's just, he doesn't always get where other folk are talking from. To Mr. Thompson, a person's a gear. It does its job quiet-like. If it squeaks or stutters, it gets replaced. The deserters are decent folk. I knew some of them before they left. I can't blame anybody for wanting to leave because this town's got issues. Life's hard here. Especially for them that don't fit in so well. We're one big Spacer's Choice family, but every family's got the one the rest whisper about. Mr. Thompson's aiming to take away their power. They'll have no lights to see, nor heat to cook. They'll be at the mercy of marauders, or worse. I think you should talk to the town's vicar about it. Max, his name is. Okay, so we can talk to Max now as well, and that's optional. Um, and I suppose it couldn't hurt. Thanks, ma'am. I just think when you gotta make a decision that'll hurt somebody, it's best to think on the right and wrong of it. That's what my dad used to say anyways. Alrighty. Thanks, Parvati, for your... Ooh, and I got buttons now on the bottom left. Arrow buttons. Directional buttons. I do love the design of this place. It's really... Diverse, I should say. It feels like everything has its own. There's a few signs that are pretty spectacular. And this 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 building is really cool as well. I mean, I love the design of this place. Um, but with that, we're going to end this episode right here at Edgewater with our new companion, Parvati. And next time, we're going to see if we can't figure out how to fix the problem of Edgewater. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of The Outer Worlds. And I guess see you guys next time. Goodbye.